hey welcome back okay so let's continue here now most of these um input boxes like this if you click somewhere else it uh, should disappear or something um let's uh let's see if maybe we just put a close button so you can do that if you want the thing to disappear when you click elsewhere by just uh, adding a, an event listener to the window. So keep in mind that this is an entirely different, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, it's a, a new page. When I click on dashboard or new product here, I'm loading a different page. So whatever event listeners I put on this one are going to be different, So which is good. So we can put event listeners for just directly this item right there. So to do that, you would have to put an event listener on the window itself. And once you click on that, it makes this thing uh, disappear. But I think we can do that in the end. For now, let's put a close button here just to balance things up a little bit. So I'll copy this or duplicate that. And instead of primary, I think the red button is danger. So danger, and let's say close on this one. I don't know what kind of close that is. Okay, close. Now, instead of right, we're going to use left on this one so that we have it on the other side. So, so close or cancel, whatever. Okay, so that's one of those and Wait a minute, there's one danger and there's one warning, I think. Is there a warning? I think I'm getting a hang of this bootstrap thing. Ah, there we go. I like that one. Okay, so save, close. So you can swap these depending on what you want. Maybe you want the red one to be the save button and so on. Okay, but uh, close should close this thing. So in order to close this is very simple because we already have a function that does that it's show add uh, that's the thing right there so we just have to add this to our button here and we'll add an event listener on click you can add it anywhere in here so let's just put it right right about there on click there we go now put event because e is not recognized by the system so let's put event there and that uh, should do it and boom see how nice that is and save okay all right so let's do something when we hit the save button now the thing is this here we're going to be sending a lot of data in this admin section you know there'll be a lot of communication between uh, the admin section and the other side using ajax so it's a good idea to just create one function that is going to do all that. And that way we standardize everything. Okay. So function uno. So let me come back here and say, uh, okay. So the thing is this uh, in, in JavaScript, in JavaScript, you can put two identical functions, unlike in other languages. So if I add another function like this, uh, it won't it won't give me an error. The only thing it will do is it will run this the last function it found and ignore the others if they're exactly the same name. So even if I put certain functions here that have the same name, uh, not to worry if they are reloaded in other pages, that will be fine. So here, let's create a function, a very generic function that will send information through Ajax a synchronous communication so that we don't have to refresh our page. So first of all, let's create a function called collect data. Something like this. Okay, so we can collect our data. And then let's send, let's create one function that will say send data. Now the reason I've separated these two is because the data needed to be collected in different pages will be different. So it's better to have a separate send data function so that I can easily use reuse this function on any page, regardless what the data was, what data was collected, right? 
okay so send data here we will send the data we're going to be and another thing is we'll be sending the data to the same exact page every time that way it's a standard process so here i will use the variable data because we'll collect our data from here and then we'll send it from here now in order to send some data it's actually an easy process we'll use ajax now to use ajax we just activate it using a variable so let's uh, create a new data uh, ajax object so i'll call it xml or you can call it ajax yeah let's call it ajax so variable ajax is equal to new http xml so the http the t's t's and p like that are small letters and then xml is all caps uh, request like that Actually, I've made a mistake here. So XML, I think, comes first. So let's swap these two like that. So XML, HTTP, request, not request, like so. Okay, there you see. You see it in blue, you know you've got it right. So there are only a few things to do in order to send an AJAX request. And the first one is to open a connection. So let's say dot .open. And the second part is just to send the data. So we'll say send and we'll send the data like so. And uh, that's about it. But we need to tell it how to send this data. So we're going to use the post like so. Mm -hmm. And now if you want to use um, if you want to use the post method, like in this case, we might want to format our our data as a post so which is uh, not really necessary but uh, it's a possibility if you want to that's you can do that by saying var form is equal to new uh, form like this form data like that I think that's correct and then now to the form you can append things you can say something like um, form dot append i hope this is correct though i haven't used this in a while so form dot append for example we can say uh, name and then you give your value there from the input box say uh, name my name something like this and then what you do now is once you are done with the form uh, form dot append and then you send you send the form like is so mm -hmm. then here you have to tell it what page you are sending this item to now if you leave this empty like this it will send back to the exact same page this is right so that might cause a bit of a problem so what we will do is we will we will tell it where to go instead and then let's put true here now true tells it to do this item do this operation in the background so that we don't freeze our ui so it's a good idea to have true there if you put it false or you leave it empty then uh, it will freeze your url while it reloads the page uh, which defeats the purpose so at this point we want to use the root uh, because as you as you remember we can't just put the name of the page here so if you are not using this mvc system you'd simply put your your page like let's say index.php there and then it will go to that page uh, in the background there but unfortunately we are using this routing routing system here which reroutes everything to the index page so we have to be a little bit more specific what we want so here Instead, I will put the root PHP, which will send to the, uh, which will send us to the home page. So let's try this. Let's say, uh, and keep in mind that you can actually put PHP directly in here. It's very valid to say something like this: variable a is equal to, and then you put your PHP tags there, and then you echo. Uh, 
whatever variable name that is, like so. And then you put your semicolon for the uh, for this. So what will happen is when the page is loaded, this PHP will echo a very, uh, what does this say? A variable in here, but be sure to put, because if it's a literal variable like this, you have to put your quotes there. Otherwise uh, it will not be recognized as a string. So it will echo the string in here and then A will be equal to that string. So this is a valid uh, type of thing. So what I want to do is to echo something just like this. I will cut this and put that echo in there. Now with PHP, we can use our shortcut just by putting echo sign. And so we don't need to put the echo. It looks much cleaner that way. And I want to put root here because that is, is the root file. And then of course, I don't want it to go to root. I want to create a controller called Ajax so that it will handle all our requests. So it's going to be like, uh, this link is now eShop public uh, Ajax, something like that. Okay. So in order to see if this will actually work, let's add a controller in here called Ajax controller. And I will save this and we'll say Ajax.php. There we go. Now we will get one of these. Um, okay, this one is too congested. Let's get the home controller. Go to Ajax and paste the content there. And let's say Ajax extends controller. And this is the thing that we need. So at this point, I don't want it to show any views because really we're not going to be using any views for this. We just want this to do some stuff for us. So I will tell it to echo uh sent from ajax controller so that's we, we can just see if it actually worked right sent from ajax controller so anything we echo in this page will be sent as a result of reading this page right so you echo something it will be sent as a result you don't echo anything nothing will be sent back right so keep that in mind so let's come back here and give it a test run so yeah, so we're not using this variable per se. So we can put anything when calling this item. So I want to call this through the button here real quick. This is not how we're going to be doing things, but I just want you to see, confirm that it's working, right? So on click, let's do something. Now data is unknown here, so we will use event. So what I expect to see is a, what I expect to see is this information from the Ajax controller, this sent from Ajax controller. If I don't see that, then uh, we're in trouble. So let me click there and let me click save. And as I figured, we are in trouble. So <laughs> let's go to our controller and let's see what errors we are having. So this error here is from our jQuery. So I'll, I'll check it out uh, offline just to see what it is about and maybe we can fix that. So we'll ignore this for now and let's look at what errors we have here. And it seems we have none. 